morning is found in Exodus chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. It's the familiar story of Moses being at the burning bush. And when Moses is at the burning bush, God gives him this great and challenging news that He's, that God's going to use him to set the Israelites free from the Egyptians. He gives them a glimpse, tells them he's going to worship God on this mountain, gives them a glimpse of his glory. But uh, Moses is, is just overwhelmed by what God is asking him to do. And, and Moses says to God, like, who are you? What is your name? Who, you know, when I go to, to Pharaoh, who can I say sent me? And this is God's response to Moses. Verse 14. God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. Amen. Please pray with me. Lord, I, I ask in your name right now that somehow, someway, you would speak through me with your good news. And that we would learn about you and how we can depend upon you in any and every situation. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I was going through different messages and uh, this encounter with uh, Moses and, uh, and an outline that really, I'm not going to use it this morning, but I just want to share it with you in the, the intro. Uh, about God's encounter with Moses and how sometimes God works with us. The first was that, um, that, that the first thing that God did with Moses, he isolated him. You know, it was 40 years in the desert. Then he uh, interested him with the burning bush. He interested him. And then, um, then God showed Moses his holy identity which is what we're going to look at this morning. And then God gave Moses instructions. And then God gave Moses instructions. Amen. We're beginning a Lenten series. We're going to do this through Easter called The God We Can Know. And we're exploring the I Am sayings of Jesus. We'll be exploring this further in adult Sunday school. We'll be exploring the I Am sayings of Jesus. I Am the bread of life. I am, I am the bread of life, knowing God's satisfaction. I am the light of the world, knowing God's guidance. I am the good shepherd, knowing God's care. I am the true vine, knowing God's power. I am the way, the truth, and the life, knowing God's way. And I am the resurrection and the life, knowing God's possibilities. And we're just getting started. We're going to do one of these every week. We're just getting started. It is the first Sunday in Lent. It's time to begin again. Take spiritual inventory. A time for intentional growth in the Lord. A story I told on Ash Wednesday uh, was a story, an absolute true story about a guy named Yates. He was a sheep farmer in Texas. It was in the Depression. He was near bankruptcy in an oil company. He said, hey, can we see if there's any oil on your land? And Yates had nothing to lose. He said, sure, go ahead. And he let the oil company drill, and a very, they started drilling, and right away they got a gusher. It was the largest find in North America until that point. And Yates became a billionaire overnight. 
The devotion was from years ago in our daily bread, which by the grace of God, I try to read every day that devotion. We have the upper room in the back as well. We have both of those devotions. But the point was this in our daily bread. Are we like Mr. Yates? You know, he became a billionaire, but up until that point, he was sitting on all this blessing and all this oil, and he didn't even know it. Well, I told the story on Ash Wednesday because sometimes I think that we're like Mr. Yates. We have Jesus in our heart, and yet we're not opening ourselves to all the blessings that Jesus wants to give us. I pray that this Lent will be a time of digging deeper into the blessings which God has for us. And maybe it'll be like on Yates's land. Maybe we don't have to dig that deep. It'll be right there. It'll be right there for us. Today we're going to the original I am statement found in the Bible. Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, God has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, tell them I am who I am. This you shall say. Further says, you know, I am has sent me to you. Don't miss this. God is calling Moses to a dangerous mission. Moses knows that he knows that he needs God. It's a good place to be, to know that you know that you need God. Also, this may be a little Egyptian influence on Moses' life. He was raised by the Egyptians. The princess had saved him. Egyptians believed names possessed magical powers. The right name had authority, and the right name had power. Moses needed all the help he could get. He was going to be calling for the release of the Israelite slaves. They were the Egyptian economy. The Egyptians had a really great thing going on. A really great thing going on. They were the, the Israelite slaves were the economy. Moses hadn't been there since he killed an Egyptian. He saw something wrong. And he said, I'm, I am going to take care of it. And he kills the Egyptian for abusing the slave. And he's a wanted man for years and years. And now he's supposed to go back there and go right into Pharaoh's presence and say, God wants you to let the slaves go. Tough mission. He needed assurance and reassurance from God. Who exactly am I working for? What exactly do you want me to do? How exactly do you expect me to accomplish this? I had to dig deep this week. We're going to be using a text, the God we can know, exploring the I am sayings of Jesus by a Reverend Rob Fuquay. And I had to do some digging this week to find out a little more about what I am who I am really means. Several things. I found this out from Reverend Fuquay's study as well as some study of my own this week. Several things we can say. First is God wants to be known. Adam and Eve were the first ones who hid. We're the ones who want to hide more than, you know. God wants to be known. And God wants to be involved with us. Moses gives to God several objections for the mission. I'm not respected. I'm not eloquent. I am not brave. And basically, again, the pastor of the study says basically God gives Moses one answer. To all his objections, I will be there. I'm going to be there for you. I will be there. He further cites a biblical interpreter, the name of Everett Fox, who states that another way of translating I am who I am is I will be there. And so I had to check this out in my commentaries. Because in Hebrew, there's not sometimes a delineation of past, present, and future. I am who I am is past, it's present, and it is future. 
And the I am who I am can also be translated. I will be there howsoever I will be there. Or another way to put it is I shall be what I shall be. I'm God. I'm here now. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. I shall be what shall be. I am he who is and who will be. I will be, but I will be. Every objection Moses gives to God, the answer, the basic answer is, I will be there. I will be there. And God is saying to Moses, you need me, you need me more than power or ability. You need me more than power or ability. Well, if that's not a motivation to get close to God, to pray to Him, to talk to Him, and He walks with me and He talks with me, if that's not a motivation to get close to God, you need me more than you need any gift that I can give you. Moses has a decision to make. Will he wait to be faithful until he feels good and adequate and feels good about himself? Or will he act faithfully and trust God to be there for him? Will he wait till he feels adequate? Or will he trust God and trust God's adequacy? My brother pastor tells a story in this first chapter. I never heard of this guy before. He's a comedian, a Christian comedian named Michael, named Michael Jr. Tells a story about visiting a prison. He goes to visit a prison. All of a sudden, the warden goes to him, give a show to the inmates. He's totally unprepared. So he's walking, getting ready to do this impromptu show. And it's like, God, I need your help. God, I need your help. Any time now, it would be good for you to start to tell me something. Doesn't tell him a thing. God doesn't tell him a thing. He walks up to the mic, looks at his feet. And there in the first row, he sees an inmate with a long white beard. And he sees that his name is Moses. <laughs> Michael Jr. looks up to heaven and says, I can work with this. <laughs> He said that was a springboard, and the rest of the show was an enormous success. <laughs> the comedian Michael Jr. discovered that day that God would give him what he needed when his feet were where God wanted them to be. That God would give him what he needed when his feet were where God wanted them to be. Moses had his feet where God wanted him to be on that day on Sinai. God invited him to show up in Egypt. God's promise was simple. You show up and I will give you what you need. I will be there as I will be there. I shall be as I shall be. I am who I am. It all means the same thing. I shall be who I shall be. I am who I am. I will be there, Moses. You and I, often we want more than this. But here's the promise. God will give us what we need when we need it. God's name is I am. I will be there as I will be there. Our series that's coming up. Just as the great I am would be with Moses and his challenges, so our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ offers to be with us in ours. In Jesus Christ, our greatest needs are met. I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the true vine. 
I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Another thing that was brought out in this study, and we're going to be doing this all through Lent, we're going to be doing these I am sayings about who God is. And not just who God is, but who we are. For Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And another spot in the Bible says, you are the light of the world. It says, I am the true vine. It says, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Teaching again, encountered this week. We're not just made by God. We are made out of God. We're made out of God's goodness, power, strength, and love. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. This Lent, we're on a journey. And we're going to be on a journey together. A journey of new discovery in our faith. I pray this Lent, it will be like Mr. Yates discovering all this oil that he didn't know he had. That there will be new encounters and new experiences with God. And this Sunday we just start by saying what God said at the very beginning with Moses. Moses, I am who I am. I shall be who I shall be. More than anything you need, I'm there. Lord Jesus, we love you. Help us to discover the richness of you, the great I am. We ask this in your name. We love you, Lord. More than anything you want to give us,